If everybody suddenly woke up financially literate and they were like, wait a minute, I'm not going to run a fucking balance on my credit card. It would destroy everything. The whole fucking thing would come down because everybody would stop spending money and the whole thing would come to a fucking crashing halt. Because again, it's a fucking social construct. The Colt doing a change in format again. Okay, I know I've been doing this a lot. I'm trying to figure out what works, but I'm blowing up on YouTube. So, I'm blowing up. I got like 50 subscribers. Whatever, go to, go to the YouTube. But um, look, I've been doing heavily epi ep edited episodes on the fucking podcast, but I'm gonna move away from that. I'm gonna edit a little bit, but I'm basically gonna do like some ranting again, you know. Um, it'll be a little bit different, but essentially the same thing. Um, so, yeah, and I'm gonna bring guests on again. I'm gonna fucking bring guests on again. Um, sick, here's what I'm doing. All right, so this is the Illegitimate Scholar Podcast, where we think that our culture is in crisis and we don't trust woke universities to explain how and why. Them motherfuckers are lying a lot. Well, sometimes they tell the truth. A lot of times they lie. So I'm Sam and I quit teaching history because I love the content but hated the limits on what and how I could teach. In this podcast, you'll hear stories in history, anthropology, culture, and geopolitics that make you think, that make you rethink what you were taught in school. In school. I promise I, I wrote that and then had to read it off because I forgot what it said, but it is the truth. Um, today what we're going to do, I, I just went on the Unfit Statesman podcast with... Uh, with Zach, and that was fantastic. Like that guy a lot. He was great. Um, we had a great time. And in order to prepare for that podcast, I kind of compiled together a list of my ideas and tried to like be like, what, what is it that I have had to say over the past 20 podcasts? So today we're kind of going to do kind of a rehash. And if you're coming from the Unfit Statesman to listen to this, I mean, there's going to be a lot of overlap with what I said in that episode and, and what's here. Um, and for my my current viewers, um, this is going to be a rehashing, me trying to kind of dig deeper into what exactly it is that I'm trying to do here. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to start with who I am, which is probably the most boring part, but I'm Sam. I was in the Marine Corps for four years, quit the Marine Corps, uh, went to school to become a history teacher. Um, I love academics, so in those four years with the GI Bill, by the way, they were paying for this. Um, some semesters, I... I uh, I did uh, 18 credits some semesters. A full load is 12. If you do 15 a semester, you'll graduate in four years. I was doing like 18, sometimes like 19, 20 credits. I did school in the summer and the winter because they paid me the stipend and I enjoyed it. And they paid for shit like going abroad and whatever. Went to Scotland with that. That was sick. Did a course in outdoor education. But at the end of it, end of four years, I got degrees in history, education, and anthropology. I was supposed to be a social studies teacher. Quit that because it's bullshit. And... Uh, Public education is kind of garbage. It's kind of my whole deal now is that public education is garbage, and I want to be an alternative to that, um, supplement that, because some of the information they tell you is very good, but just the format of it, you know, sitting in a fucking chair for eight hours a day, humans aren't supposed to fucking do that. You're not supposed to fucking do that. It's ridiculous. Sitting in a fucking chair for eight hours a day, getting talked at, and then they medicate kids because they won't sit down when they're supposed to be fucking running around outside exploring shit. You know, and that's what I did in Scotland. I did a course in outdoor education. I taught a fucking class about a Celtic hill fort at the location of a Celtic hill fort. Fucking hiked up a mile up this goddamn thing. Like, you know, I was a Marine. I was fucking huffing. We had like fat teachers coming along. I was like, fuck yeah, get it. That's what we should be doing. Um, okay, so we're going to start with what the fuck is culture? What is culture? That was my first episode. And there's a reason it was my first episode. Because people come out and they think that a culture... Or they think culture just means like fucking music and art and, you know, Lizzo shaking her big fat ass up on TV, which, you know, I support, love Lizzo. I think they should have made her the little mermaid. I'm just saying that that's, that is an example of culture. You know, that is culture. I know some of you want to say that it's not culture because you don't like that a fat black woman is up there shaking her ass being a proud independent woman. But uh, I support it and it is culture. It's a manifestation of culture. It might not be the culture that you like, but it's culture. Um, but there's other things that are culture too, man. I mean, it, it, culture is way more pervasive. It's not just the arts. It's not just music. It's none of that. It, well, it is that, but it's, it's more things. Um, you know, so I'm going to read two definitions, two of the quickest definitions that I did in my first episode. First one, the knowledge people use to live their lives in the way in which they do so. The knowledge people use to live their lives in the way in which they do so. So the way they live our lives, driving a fucking car is culture. Knowing how to drive that car. Socially in informed, culturally informed, fucking culture. By the way, go fucking birds. Forgot to start with that. Go birds. It's Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. 
Um, the National Park Service uses an equally simple, similar definition of culture. So the National Park Service, this is their definition, uh, a system of behaviors, including economic, religious, and social beliefs, values, and ideologies, and social arrangements. So all of these things, social arrangements, family structure, nuclear family, that's culture. The lack of a nuclear family and the resulting drug epidemic, that's also culture. Not as good culture, but it's culture. Okay. Um, economic, religious, and social. Yeah, religions are fucking culture. Capitalism, economic system, that's culture. Socially constructed. It's, it's a system that's created. You go back to fucking 500 AD and you, you try to tell somebody in fucking England, like somebody in the, in, in the kingdom of England. Oh, well, I wouldn't even be fucking England then. What the fuck? 500? Okay. 800 AD. You're in Essex. You're in Essex and you're like, hey, king, you want to invest in this fucking place, I'll give you 3% APR. You buy this land. You are the deal ass shit being the head honcho in charge to sell shit to people. You'll make more money. They're going to execute you. I mean, they might not execute you, but you know, they didn't even do like Christians didn't fucking do. Um, they, they didn't do money back then. They wouldn't do interest. You for a long time, Christians and Muslims, you can't do, you can't do interest. You're not allowed to. Uh, the Jews did it in a lot of different places. That's one of the reasons they're associated with money today is, uh, you know, long history of, of dealing with money um, because the other people wouldn't do it. They weren't allowed to by their religion, the Muslims and the Christians both. Uh, don't quote me on that Muslim one, actually. Um, OK, so I do pop anthropology. There's this pop history. There's plenty of fucking pop history. I do pop anthropology. Everybody that likes anthropology, they're all a bunch of fucking blue haired, blue haired, call them pedophiles, map ass motherfuckers. Okay, and, and you know, I'm friends with a lot of the alphabet people, so I, I get it. But, you know, I, I'm doing anthropology from like a moderate position or a conservative position, depending on who you ask. I mean, socially, it's conservative, but if you can't tell, I'm a bit of a fucking, you know, lefty economically. I mean, it's not hard to be a lefty economically in the era of neoliberalism when everything is fucking just profit before people all the time. But like, I, I do believe in a class based structure, and this is opposed to racial wokeness that that we have um okay so a lot of what i talk about is the permeation of social constructs into everything social constructs are everywhere number one the moment you fucking open your mouth that's a social construct the definitions of words that we have are social constructs so when i'm talking the reason that you can understand me in english is because you also know english because you know the language, the language is called. Languages are reflective of the culture in which they live. I'm going to be doing an episode on this eventually, but a couple quick examples off the top of my head. You look at the Inuit. They live in a place, the Inuit, uh, also known as Eskimos. Inuits, the, just call them Inuit. That's what they call themselves. Um, up there in the Great White North in northern Canada and Greenland and shit, um, the Inuit they do direction by north, south, east, west. They know their cardinal directions all the time. There's no fucking landmarks. You turn right, turn right at what? The fucking snowbank? Where are you going to turn right at? So these people in their language, they don't do directions like right and left. They might have words for them, but they, they, they know their directions north, south, east, west. Because that's how they do direction in their language. That's an aspect of culture. Um, and they know that so that they know where they are at all times using the fucking stars or whatever. I don't remember exactly how they orient themselves, but they know that because they know that there ain't shit around because it's snow and fucking ice and maybe a seal that you club in the head. That's culture. That is culture. And other languages, it's why you can't translate shit. It's why the Bible gets translated from fucking Aramaic to Greek to Hebrew to fucking Romance or whatever the fuck it is. And then to English, it doesn't work. There's a bunch of hidden meaning that's lost sacred geometry and shit like that that just goes away because it, it's impossible to translate because languages are reflective of their culture full episode to come okay social institutions perpetuate themselves remember that social institutions perpetuate themselves it's there if there's one thing that you remember from my fucking podcast it is that social institutions perpetuate themselves the members of that social institution of any idea they will push grow their prominence and grow their group because that makes them stronger it just um, and this is any social institution, any social institution, you can break it down to its most simple. And even if you don't want to, you can compare a church to a fucking synagogue, of course, because they're both religious institutions. No one argues with that, 
but you can also compare a church and a synagogue and a mosque. You can compare them to a fucking school because they're all social institutions. I get it. They're different types of social, but just putting them into categories like church and school, that's a social construct. The fact that there are, there's a category of things that we call schools. That's a social construct. The things that there's category of things that we call sports. That's a social construct. The definition of that is arguable. You know, if you've ever had a conversation about like, what's a sport, you get to the periphery of what a sport is. You know, you play basketball, soccer, you, that's a sport. Everybody agrees that's a sport. You get into things like gymnastics or cheerleading or weightlifting. Is that a sport? People argue about it. There's different definitions. People define the word a different way. That's a social construct. So when you're looking at something and you're, and you're trying to categorize like, no, you can only compare a school to a school because they're both education, but there's things on the periphery. Like what about camp? Is a camp a school? It's not really a school, but it's education in a certain way. Depends on how you argue it. What about the Boy Scouts? Are they education? Are they allowed to be compared to schools? They're all social institutions. So if you want to really, really uh, deep, dig deep into anything, you got to break it down to its most basic. Once you start adding layers of words and social constructs on top of social constructs, you start just looking at things through the lens of your own culture, which is okay. It's what we do every day of our lives. But it gets hairy when you're trying to talk about what a religious institution is. And then Western scholars are arguing about if these Eastern Asian things like Confucianism, ancestor worship, and um, Taoism, legalism, are these religions? Are, are these philosophies? What the fuck are they? And it's hard to define them because they're on the periphery of what we understand. So they don't fit neatly into, this boxes, into these boxes. So let's break it down to its most basic social institutions that are built up social constructs, social institutions that are built up on cultural knowledge, politics. You look at politics. What I hear a lot, what I heard a lot on college campuses is when I was in college, what I heard a lot when I was in college is people talking about how, you know, the Democratic Party in the United States, they're, they're the party of, of unity and they're the party of peace and they're the party of... Um, People would say that the Democratic Party is the party of unity and peace and respect and they're for human rights. But all these things are social fucking constructions. So I'm going to read you a quote. I'm going to read you a quote here by a man named Gandhi, peacemaker himself. Hitler killed five million Jews. It is the greatest crime of our time. But the Jews should have offered themselves to the butcher's knife. They should have thrown themselves into the sea from cliffs. As it is, they succumbed anyways in their millions. That is Gandhi, the guy who is brought up as this peaceful dude. That's his conception of peace. It's probably not the same as your conception of peace. My conception of peace isn't a marginalized group collectively killing themselves and jumping off cliffs like a bunch of fucking lemurs. But Gandhi thinks that just because the Germans wanted to kill the Jews, that the Jews should have killed themselves. That's peace. That is fucking stupid. That is so stupid. That's so beyond not what I would think of peace at all. So when you when you're thinking about oh this is the this is the country this is the um this is the group of peace this is the party of peace is it really the party of peace is it the party of peace that you think it is is this or is it socially constructed ideas that you have in your head that you fit this in your box because it's convenient for you because it's convenient for you to support the Democratic Party and you want the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. Either one, you want them to be the power that you that you think they are. You want them to be righteous and good because you're righteous and good and you want to be on the righteous and good side. But at the same time, who the fuck are you living in America wearing clothes? Like, I don't know where the fuck this was made. I forget. What, Bangladesh? You think the person making this was treated well? Probably fucking not. So let's talk about historical narratives. One thing, I, I didn't get into this with Zach yesterday in The Unfit Statesman, but he was talking about historical facts, and I, I'm going to bring this up to him later because I'm sure I'm going to talk to him again. I had a great... Um, everything that we know about history is socially constructed. The methods that we judge history by are socially constructed, and they're different over time and in different places. You think they're looking at history in the same way in North Korean universities, which exist, by the way. North Korea has universities. You think they're teaching history in the same way in North Korea as they are in the West? There's a lot of overlap between France and England and the U.S. and the U.K., U.K., England, and Canada and shit and Australia because they, they come from the same culture. They come, well, not the same culture, but they come from a similar culture. 
They come from a similar culture, and and the culture of upper education, they're very intertwined. They do things a little bit differently in the UK than they do here, but ultimately, it's the same tradition. We study each other's fucking scholars and shit. Like, we learn about Adam Smith here. Over there, they learn about fucking, I don't know, they probably learn about Thomas Jefferson at one point, who's internationally important. Benjamin Franklin, you fucking FDR. They learn about FDR, of course. Um... So everything you know about history is a socially constructed argument. It's an argument made using socially constructed facts make, based on is studied by the universities, which is based on what is funded to be studied by the university, as well as the individual people that create that history. And they're using methods that are chosen by these same social institutions. So it's all socially constructed. So they're making historical arguments, oftentimes good historical. But that doesn't mean that the reason they're not making those arguments, prioritizing those specific things, isn't a isn't from a biased source. It isn't socially constructed. So I it's it's tough to call pretty much anything in history a fact because it's all argument. And once you get down into naming events, you know, today people have arguments like, was the Enlightenment even a thing? Was the Renaissance even a thing? Because to say that the Renaissance is a thing definitely is to say that it's a fact and to say that it's a fact and it's above being argued about whether the Renaissance is a thing. And there's a lot of good evidence for the Renaissance, but it's not a fact that it happened because to say it's a fact that, that it happened, you have to take all these historical arguments put together and turn them into a narrative that is based in the culture in fact. And that is dangerous. And universities seem to recognize that a little bit but more so when it's convenient to the narrative that universities want to push. And I'm here to give a different historical perspective. What is taught in schools is decided by politicians, the upper echelons of uh, society, the upper echelons of things like the Department of Federal Education, the Federal Department of Education, which should be defunded to get rid of it, defund the, the Federal Department of Education. It was only started in 1979, so why the fuck? Do we need it? We don't need it for education. But people insist that if you get rid of the Federal Department of Education, like, oh, no, how are we going to educate people? I don't know. How did we educate people for 200 fucking years before? Or we'll say 350 because the first public schools were started in the Massachusetts Bay Colony in the 1630s when they'd only been there for 15 years. There was a daily fucking threat of Native American attacks because they were fucking at war with the Native Americans. They're like, you know what we need? We need public schools. Good idea at the time. Now they're fucked. But good idea at the fucking time. Educating everybody. Love it. But the, the, the thing is, when you educate people, you're educating them in the social constructs that you've created. And the curriculum that is chosen is chosen for a bunch of different reasons. Why do you think there's no personal finance classes? You can get them in some schools. But why are they not widespread? You think that the people who benefit from the majority of Americans being in debt, consumer debt, buying their fucking products because they own the companies, you think they want people becoming more informed in personal finance? wreck the fucking economy if everybody suddenly woke up financially literate and they were like wait a minute i'm not gonna run a fucking balance on my credit card it would destroy everything the whole fucking thing would come down because everybody would stop spending money and the whole thing would come to a fucking crashing halt because again it's a fucking social construct the whole concept of capitalism is a social construct and it can be deconstructed i'm not saying i want to i don't I like living like this. I want things to be stable. I don't want things to, to super change. I just want things to be stable and people to be treated well. But it can and it will be socially deconstructed if we're not fucking careful. Let's talk about health. Health is socially constructed. Everybody thinks you go to the fucking doctor when you're sick. And that makes sense because that's how we do it in American culture. That's how we do it. That's not how they did it 700 years ago. That's not how they, they do it in indigenous communities. They don't have doctors. They don't have the access to the same stuff we do. But that doesn't mean that they're not doing something important. And I'm not saying we should get rid of doctors. Doctors have their place. But the fact is that we live in a country where doctors are in charge of health entirely because other practitioners are not really allowed to practice medicine. They're allowed to do certain things. There's homeopathic medicine that's looked down on by our culture, by our mainstream culture. But you look at the doctors and, and they have a certain way of doing things. And I think it's very obvious that, number one, there's a profit incentive in a lot, which sometimes takes away from giving people the best care. Um, you know, a lot of people go bankrupt because of medical bills and shit, which is horrible. It's not supposed to be fucking happening. So the socially constructed, the, so doctors 
it's hard to look at a specific thing about how doctors have really, really fucked up and done wrong by the American people, doctors specifically. But if you look at the medical system as a whole and you look at our culture um, elevating the medical system with gatekeeping methods of like, you have to go to this social constructed university, learn these social constructed things on this path. There's, there's gatekeepers all along the way that lead you into the medical field. And individual people can just kind of decide they don't like you and get you the fuck out. Maybe not officially, but anybody who's ever had a job for a few years or went to a college knows that when someone steps out of line or they do something that someone doesn't like, there's ways of creating a reason. There is. Come on. Everybody knows that. Ever, everybody's seen somebody or been the person at work who pissed off the wrong person. And then suddenly they're getting demerits for things that didn't fucking matter six months ago. And then they get three strikes and they're fired. And there's a paper trail to prove it. They did these things wrong. Of course they got fired. But at the same time, the reason that that happened wasn't the real reason. And it's the same way when, when you're talking about medicine. So only a particular type of person can practice medicine. And even become a nurse. It's the same thing. Maybe not as difficult. Still very respectable. Love nurses. Um, but cultures have different ways of dealing with things. And our way of dealing with health is doctors and dietitians, nutritionists. Or I, I think dietitians is a protective term. Those are doctors, I think. Or they have like masters and whatever. They're part, they're, they're part of a medical board certified thing. Okay. It's, it's past these social constructs. But those people are in charge of our health. And look at our fucking health. Look at us in America. Mexico, Canada, Western Europe, lots of Europe, anywhere where the Western diet happens, which you can say that's not the doctor's fault. I mean, ultimately, if you look at it, it's most basic. The medical system is supposed to take care of the health of the country. So we have a medical system that's supposed to take care of the health in the country. And younger people are what? 70 fucking percent of them have a mental health issue. We got what? 70% fucking overweight, 40% obesity and rising. And you're telling me the doctors are doing their job. Maybe they're doing what they're supposed to. They're doing their job that they're supposed to. But maybe there's something fucking wrong with their job. There's something wrong with the social construction where they're in charge of our health and our health is failing like crazy. If by the standards of the culture, 70% of people are not healthy mentally, 60% of people are not healthy physically, who the fuck is wrong in that situation? The majority of people who are bad by the standards that's set by the culture or is it the culture itself or is there a systematic issue in the fucking culture that is not serving our needs what do you think i think it's fucking obvious i'm gonna do a quick speed round of a few more topics um and then i'm gonna get out of here i'm gonna post this up let me know what you guys think join the discord please um and today super bowl i'm having friends coming over i'm making everybody food we're going to sit down, enjoy watching sports, but that's community. We're breaking bread together. I got friends coming over. I'm making them food. We're going to enjoy it together. It's going to be awesome. Making pigs in a blanket. That's American culture. That's USA, motherfucker. Um, okay. GDP and income. We use those as markers of success of a country and an individual in Western culture. You use that as a marker of culture 500 years ago, pretty much anywhere. People are kind of like, eh, what do you mean? What the fuck is that? Why is that a marker of success? You know, we're not happy. 70% of people have mental health problems. We're not happy. Yeah, we're materially rich. That's fucking great. What does that do? I got a warm bed. I'm very comfortable. Were you supposed to be comfortable? Were you born to fucking lay in your warm bed? I'm butchering a quote by Marcus Aurelius right now. I wish I had it prepared, but I wasn't thinking I was going to say that. But GDP and income, how is that success? You read the Tao. You read Buddhist texts. You read Hindu texts. You read early Christian texts. You, you actually read them and you prioritize the right things because people prioritize other things like money's the root of all evil. What's the point of that? The, the, the point of that I see is that desire, and this would be basically directly from, from the Buddha, desire is what brings you suffering because if you don't desire, how can you suffer? If you desire and you don't get, it's a lose-lose. You know, this consumerist society that we have is fucking sick and it's anti-human. It's anti-human. It's created by all these social cons. So the idea of success being income and GDP is socially constructed. Voting. People assume that's the will of the people. They assume that's the will of the people. But when I vote for the president, I have essentially two options. I always vote third party. But there are two options that people feel are real. Like people will literally tell you like, like I'll tell them I'm voting third party. They'd be like, you're voting third party. You're giving the other party your vote. They don't know what party I'd vote for. A lot of these people, I just tell them, they're like, you're giving a vote to Donald Trump. 
if you vote for the Green Party candidate or the Libertarian candidate, yeah, motherfucker, if I wasn't voting for this candidate, I'd probably be voting for probably be voting for Donald Trump. Sorry, I'm not going to vote for Joe Biden. I certainly wasn't going to vote for Hillary Clinton. I definitely wouldn't have voted for Joe for whatever. Voting is not the will of the people. It's just the way that the government legitimizes the voting process and convinces people that it's the way of the will of the people. But if you look into the statistics, did a whole episode on this. 2014, Princeton did a study that showed that people's views, normal people's views, do not get represented in the laws that are passed. It's economic elites' preferences and special interest groups of large corporations, not even like citizen special interest groups. Those things don't matter. No statistically significant correlation between people's preferences, between normal people's preferences and the laws that get made in this country. That's that's a fact. It's not a fact. It's an argument that was made by this Princeton study. But if you believe in these social institutions, you have to at least give some credence to a Princeton study. It's not like when I when you vote for Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden, nobody the majority of people don't like those fucking people. But they're the options that are chosen for us through these socially constructed ideas. And first it goes through the fucking primaries where they're private corporations, they're corporations, whatever, they're private organizations that are created to choose these candidates. And then those candidates that are chosen for you by a private organization go through this public organization, which is supposed to be like legit in every way and not corrupt, although we know it is. And then you get to choose your president. That's not real choice. And it doesn't end up with what people want actually being made into law. Drugs that society uses. Societies use different drugs, man. They. I'm, I'm, I have so much energy right now because I'm hopped up on fucking a, a mug of espresso, not a fucking shot of espresso. My Italian American girlfriend made me a fucking mug of espresso this morning. So I got extra fucking energy. I love my mug of espresso, but that's that's culture. The fact that we use we use caffeine in Western culture and capitalist cultures. It didn't start being a thing until the Industrial Revolution. When people were going inside, they had to work. It, it upped their creativity or productivity. It ups their productivity to have coffee. So employers started giving it to their workers for free. They would just give them coffee breaks. They would give them coffee and then people would work better. They'd be more efficient. They'd work for longer because that's what it does. You go to other cultures, they have different kinds of things. A lot of indigenous cultures use fucking uh, hallucinogens. You know, a lot of you have probably heard stories of the Vikings going into battle on fucking mushrooms. Pretty badass, kind of fucking crazy and stupid because I don't like war. So like it's stupid, but like they're on fucking hallucinogens. That's cool. But that's what their culture had. Their culture liked hallucinogens. And cultures can be based around different drugs, multiple drugs, you know? Maybe they didn't want marijuana to become a staple drug of the United States because it makes people fucking lazy. I don't know. I smoke a ton of pot, and I'm not lazy. I'm the opposite of lazy. I'm kind of out of my fucking mind. Um, okay. Calling the unwanted. You're not going to like this fucking one. Almost anyone's not going to like it. But different cultures have different ways of calling their unwanted. So with us, we have fucking, we have abortion. You got abortion. You call the unwanted before they come out because we know we have ultrasounds. We have pregnancy tests. We can do safe abortions. So you see there, there are people in the society that the culture accepts. We don't want. I'm calling them people, fetuses. If you want to call them fetuses, sorry. They're going to become a human being. So I'm essentially calling them a person because they are and I believe they have a soul. So they call, they kill, they allow women to select for themselves if they want to kill the child that's in their stomach, in their womb. So they're, they're allowed to do that. In ancient Sparta, they weren't doing abortions. They'd have the baby come out. They don't want to have the baby. They don't want the baby's DNA to muddy up all the fucking strong Spartan DNA. They leave it outside, it dies. Gets eaten by a wolf, dies of exposure, whatever. That's their way of calling in the culture that they have. It's a different way of doing it. In China, the bureaucracy just comes down and says, well, not anymore, but they used to say one child policy. And then people kind of took care of it on their own. And there was a genocide of little baby girls. It's just horrible. I'm not making light of it. It's horrible. It's disgusting. But that's what happened. That was their way of dealing with it. They dealt with it in America. They allowed, hey, women can get abortions. They'll self-select for babies that, are, that they don't want to have, which is correlated with, you know, later lack of success if your mom doesn't want to have you. Terrible, but that's, that's the truth of it. Um, whereas in China, very authoritarian society built on thousands of years of empire, um, they would just, they, they came down 
through the bureaucracy, they said, this is our policy, one child. And then the, the like 10 percent of the people there are in the the one party, the Communist Party of China, and they enforce that in whatever way that they, they did. And that involves some killings. And we don't really we don't know the whole part of it. And it happened different ways in different provinces and locales in China. Um, one extra one, genocide. Let's talk about genocide. That's always fucking fun. So in in Rwanda, when they did a genocide, they did it with fucking machetes. They did it with machetes. And they just killed like a million people with machetes. Absolutely disgusting. Horrible. In, um, in Myanmar recently, I think they did it with guns. I think they were shooting a lot of the Rohingya Muslims that were being killed. Again, not fun. In Germany, in World War II, the Holocaust, they're killing gays and Jews. They're using German industrialism because that's, that's what they do. It's post-industrial Germany. They are very efficient, bureaucratically based people. And unfortunately, that culture, just like Rwanda's culture of being, you know, it's it, at the time, at, today it's actually apparently one of the nicest and fastest growing places in Africa with this horrible thing that happened 30 years ago. But like, because it was a very rural place, they all had machetes, they commit this genocide with machetes. In Germany, it turns to a real thing where they're using chemicals and they're, um, they, they have, like, they're using trains to bring people in. The way that they did their genocide is culturally informed, which is fucking insane to think about, but it's true. It's, um, you know, you're not gonna, you wouldn't have seen the Rwandan genocide with trains and uh, poisonous gas and shit like that. They wouldn't have done it that way because they didn't have that shit. And there's no like cultural background for them to do it that way. They instead used machetes. I'm not sure which one is worse. They're both pretty fucking bad. Um, and the last one, the last fucking one, which is very important. So I hope most of you haven't dropped off at this point. Join my discord. Um, human beings, if you agree that human beings any modern human, and we've been modern humans for, I think now they're looking at 300,000 years. We've So any modern human, if you believe they are equally smart and capable across the world today, and also any modern humans that have lived in the past three years, which goes back pretty far. If you agree with that example, and you think that human beings are equal, uh, which, which I essentially think you should, what you then see is you look at our culture, and you look at what our culture values. And if you're not an ultra-nationalist or an ultra-culturalist and you don't think that Western culture is superior, which I don't think you should, I think that you should think it's it might be superior good for you. It is, it is for me. I like Western culture. I live in it. I like to live in it. I was acculturated in it. You know, I grew up in this culture, so I like this culture. It's, it's familiar to me. You know, there's I, obviously I have issues with it. I wouldn't choose a different culture because I, I, I grew up in this one. This is what I know. If you compare our culture and our values to the past, you see that other cultures had completely, diff completely different ideas of morality, completely different ideas about what people should do with their lives, completely different conceptions of absolutely everything. Even people across the world today, you know, ask an Arab guy how he feels about women's rights, but they're just as smart as us, the same as us. They're not dumb. You wanna say they're dumb? Go ahead. Okay, I'm not going to say that. I, and I, I legitimately don't think it's true. But if you think that they're as smart as us and you think that cultures of the past were as smart as us, you also have to accept that these were very smart people. These were intelligent people who then went on to do these horrible things that don't make any sense to you. So if they don't make any sense to you based on our social constructions and how you understand the world based on your social, social construction, what you also have to admit is that they must have done it for a fucking reason. They must have done this for a reason. And they must not have been stupid. You know, they might have been bloodthirsty and warlike, but that's a reflection of the time they were living in. We're living in the most peaceful time in world history. It doesn't seem like it based on what you see on the news, but that's what we're living through. Pretty much every culture of the past was just incredibly violent. The concept of sexual consent doesn't really pop up in the modern world. It doesn't really pop up in the world until modern times, except in, you know, specific places. But like, dude, the mo like Attila the Hun... Attila the Hun and fucking Genghis Khan. You read through, you do Dan Carlin's hardcore history on fucking, on Genghis Khan. The the way it's written about him raping women. Sorry, I should have done a content warning on the sexual assault. In this. I apologize if that bothered anybody, but I, I'll put it at the beginning. Um, the Genghis Khan, when it's written about what he did when he raped women, 
after he had conquered a city, when he was raping women, usually like the daughters and the wives of the king, wherever he was going, he, they, they write in it, he made her his wife. And that's because in their culture, you take somebody over, you're allowed to rape the women. The women are property. They were property of the other guy. You conquered him. You have the rights over them. They're slaves. The right to destroy something is the absolute control over it. So if you're allowed to just kill people, you have absolute control over them. And that's what the Mongols did. Everybody they conquered was fucking slaves. And they killed a lot of them. They used some of them. One time, they, they threw slaves into a moat to fill up the moat. And then they rode their horses over it and they killed everybody in the fucking city. And those were people that were just as smart as you. Somehow. Same brain as you. Same fucking modern brain. All of them homo sapiens sapiens. And that was their idea of morality. So when you sit here, you sit in your fucking college classroom with your air conditioning and your clothes made by slaves and your fucking cell phone made by slaves and you sit there and talk about how superior you are to other people, shut the fuck up. You're not. And the ideas that you have in 30, 40 years are going to be considered fucking evil. What's her name? What was that? What's the blind, deaf, and dumb chick? I always get, Anne Frank. I always get her confused with Anne Frank. It doesn't make any sense. The rich girl that went to Harvard, even though she was blind, deaf, and dumb. What, what the fuck was her name? Whatever. She was a eugenicist. You know, eugenicist, eugenicism was a fucking progressive idea in the early 20th century. Think about that. You got progressive ideas today that might be viewed pretty badly in the future. Maybe judge the past the same way you would want yourself judged. Because all of your opinions, no matter what they fucking are, in 50 years, 100 years, 150 years, it's going to be absolute nonsense dribble if it were to be judged by the standards of then, just like you judge the standards of other people.